And uh, Chris Ockley, Missouri track fanatic and running junkie, on the phone with Kamari Montgomery, the uh, uh, Plainfield, Illinois uh, native and uh, University of Missouri freshman who's uh, hopefully not done with his uh, freshman track season after a uh, uh, ninth, tying for ninth at the NCAA meet and uh, is getting ready to run the USATF Junior Nationals and then after that in the Olympic Trials. Um, Tell me, uh, tell me, Kamari, what what made uh, Mizzou and and Coach Carjay Lyles and and the uh, Mizzou track program? What made that the right choice for you, coming out of uh, Chicago suburbs? Um, I think there was a choice. Really, was of course Coach Carjay uh, Lyles and uh, just a teammate. My visit here was great. Um, my teammates didn't feel like home. They're like my brothers to me now. I can go to them for anything, and uh, including Coach Carjay Lyles, I can. No, both of them uh, up or anything outside of track. Um, and even on the track, you know, he's a great person and coach to be around and gets on gets on me when I when I mess up and, and, and corrects me when I when I do mess up as well. So I think just the the, the coaching that I have as far as Coach Carter allows is just it's amazing. I love I love I love my my, my spot here in Missouri. Well you had a great high school career, I think five times to Illinois uh, class three state champion, which is the highest in in Illinois. Three classes there, and uh, had the sweep, the the uh, tr- sprint sweep your senior year, hundred, two hundred, and four hundred. And uh, let's see, I think uh, uh, on the national list, I think you were on the mile split national list. Had you uh, ninth in the four hundred as a senior at forty six twenty four, and tied for sixteenth in the two hundred at twenty ninety six. Um, as we go back and talk about indoors this year, you, you set the school record with a 47-33, and uh, we're having a pretty good indoor season. And then at SECs in late February at Arkansas, you went 46-08 in the prelims, a top 15 world mark, and obviously broke your school record. Uh, and then in the finals on Saturday, you, you blast a 45-78 um, in the in the quote unquote you know slow heat of the of the 400 finals, and then you had to. Stick around for the next next heat and see if that held up, and it held up. And I just remember seeing a video of you running around the uh, infield of the track there, going nuts. Uh, you know, winning an SEC titles as, as a freshman, uh, and even the day before, you even set the school record in indoor two hundred twenty one oh three. But take me back to what that was like winning an SEC title and as a freshman in the four hundred at SECs at Arkansas. Um, what can I say? Uh, going back to that. That meet, um, you know, I was kind of nervous being uh, only a freshman at a, a huge meet. Um, it was obviously a god blessing experience, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for a world. Um, going into prelims, I kind of had the mindset of just trying to make it to the podium, make it to finals, and move on to the next day. And that I did. Um, going into finals, I couldn't take it. I was nervous. I was, I was just. I don't know. I was kind of, I was very, very anxious to get out there and compete with the best as far as Gino Hall and and, and uh, Michael Cherry. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a, a great experience. Um, coming around that last 200, 150 mark, I kind of thought to myself, uh, literally, I thought to myself, uh, podium. That's the first word that popped into my mind coming around that uh, 150, and I just kicked it in and. Once I kicked it in, it was it was it was all all race from there. Uh, it was it was it was a great experience. It's a it's a blessing that to be able to call myself an indoor SEC champion in the 400. Um, arguably one of the best and toughest um, events in track and field, um, and to be named an SEC champion only as an 18 year old freshman, uh, I, I never thought that I would be in this position. Right. Right. And uh, yeah, it's, and we talk about podium that you know, and it still blows my mind the SEC to be all conference and on the podiums just top three. Well, you know, most conference meets you if you score or place even the top six or eight or so, you're you're all conference. But it blows my mind the uh, probably the toughest sport, the toughest conference, the toughest sport in in any college uh, sport or any division is that probably SEC track and field, and they only honor the top three is pretty amazing to me. But you know, your time there, I think, was, was eighth in the world, even now, just as the indoor season wrapped up, eighth in the world on a standardized track and even tenth overall on even uh, oversized track. But um, 
So you, you go to your first NCAA meet a couple weeks later in Birmingham, Alabama, and run forty six seventy eight in the in the prelims to take eleventh. What did you take away from that experience and, and gain from that your first NCAA meet? Um, I kind of used it as a, as a I turned a positive a negative into a positive. Um, made it that far. Um, I wish I really don't wish I could go back to that meet. Um, it, it's something that I always stay in the back of my mind, but. I know from now on forward, I just, uh, from that day, I moved on and get ready for the outdoor season. Right, right. Outdoors early on, you run some hundreds, 1057, 1068, a couple of 200s, 2086, 2080, uh, 46 flat, 400, John Mock McDonald invite. Uh, in the SECs, you guys place ninth in the 4x1 and 3999. Uh, I think, um, oh. In the 400 prelims, you take six, 45, 83, and then in that loaded 400 final on the last day of the championships, you know, in the 11 guys from the conference end up making it to the SEC or the two NCAAs, and you come through with a four, an unbelievable 45, 13 to to win. Tell me about outdoor SEC meet down in Alabama and uh, run a 45, 13. Um, going like I said, um, I went to that meet. Um, with a lot of momentum, um, used a couple uh, of previous races and looked at a couple high school races. And of course, I watched uh, Michael Johnson, kind of tradition thing that I do before every meet. Um, watch Michael Johnson race, see how he races and his pace, and they go off what he does. You know, he's, he's obviously Michael Johnson, a uh, 400, uh, 400 record holder. Um, I kind of, and then in prelims, I, I, I made it, um, not with the fast, not with the fastest time, but with the time that I made, made it enough to get in. Um, and, and, and knowing I was kind of on that verge of not making it was kind of something that, you know, Kamara, you need to stop playing. You need to stop, 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 stop trying to hold it and then blast it in the last 200. You need to, you need to go from the jump. Um, and going into that next day, that's kind of what I did. I uh, had Michael Cherry um, and Fred Curley and Armin Hall and Najee Glass and Fitzroy Dunkley, you know, all of the, the top 400 runners in the SEC still to this day. Um, and and I kind of use, use it as momentum. I kind of went in at SEC as a, the underdog. You know, they... Uh, the media was kind of saying that indoor SEC was a fluke, and uh, that 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 hearing that was one thing that kind of kind of ticked it off. Like that, that pushed my buttons. I, I didn't I didn't think the media could you know say that, but going into um, that final day, I I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys think think what you want, say what you want. By the end of the day, it's always the first to the finish line who has that medal around their neck, and. Um, I kind of kicked it in at the 150 mark, 200. Um, it just went all out. I was dead after the race, <laughs> clearly, and uh, I, 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 it was a blessing. I, I didn't know I was gonna, I didn't think I was gonna go out and got that kind of time. And when I looked at that, that time, it said 45, 13. I was like, man, that's fast. Right. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was kind of, I was close to a 44. That's, that's, that's my big goal. And, Gonna be coming pretty soon, so I was kind of excited to see that I ran a 45-1, coming from a 46-7. <laughs> so 45-1 is a, it's, it's, that, that, that's big, that's yeah. big. So. Yeah, yeah. I think that as of a day or two ago, that time was still put you 22nd in the world. I think. And uh, did you think that you were capable of, of that kind of time at the at that moment? Um, I'm, I knew I was kind of capable of it. Um, that me. I didn't think it was going to be ran at that meet, um, but I, I, I knew I knew in my mind that I'm always capable of running uh, 45 or 44. I'm capable of doing anything class restrictively, but I'm kind of kind of leaning my way towards that 44. I'm going to take the blood, sweat, and tears out of practice, and I believe in Coach Cardio Lowes, and he'll get me there. So go on by what he does and how he coaches me. And trust him to get me to where I need to be. Right, right. And winning, you obviously got to talk to John Anderson, the ESPN anchor, and 
former Mizzou journalism grad and uh, former high jumper on the Mizzou track team. So I'm sure that was kind of a, kind of a, a fun fun opportunity for you too. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was uh that was that was that was really really good experience. Uh, the whole SEC meet going there, even you know this uh, the popularity of the SEC meet uh, and how it spread worldwide is it's, it's crazy. So right. being able to say I was competing in there and come out with a gold medal that's something else. Right. Yeah. Well, at the NCAA West prelims at Kansas, you were third in the 400 and 45.95, and uh, the 4 by one took 14th, just missing the uh, top 12 qualifying mark. Tell me just briefly about uh, what that would have been like to qualify in the 4 by one and just missing out. Um, you know, it's uh, I don't question it, really. It's uh, God's plan. You know, it's, it's something that I can uh, say, yeah, we were all upset at about, you know, as a, as a team and as a me and my brothers, you know, we were kind of we were very upset about you know not making it. So, you know that 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 kind of that night, you know, it's kind of down for all of us. You know what I'm saying? It was, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we still made it that far. We're still young, still got a lot of learning to do. You know, and uh, we 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 we're gonna be back soon. And then at some point after around the prelims or before NCAA's, you're you're named the uh, or after SECs and before NCAA's, you're named the SEC Freshman Runner of the Year and the Coaches Association Midwest Region Track Athlete of the Year. What was it like to to receive those honors? Um, it's a blessing, man. I I, I wasn't expecting any of those awards. Um, I kind of just got a. I didn't even know those awards were, awards were given. You know, I didn't know, I, like I said, I, previous interviews, I've never been really, uh, uh, I would say, known to track. I didn't know what track really was and stuff. So and kind of being able to say, you know, I was a part of that and you know, being able to get that trophy and that title under my name, it's, it's, it's another huge blessing, especially being so young and only being 18. It's, it's, it's something that I can really look back and tell my kids, you know, hey, Father was an SEC champion right. twice, and athlete of the year, um, freshman of the year. You know, it's 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 a lot of people who could be under that category, you know. But to say I'm the one who made it, it's it's something I could wake up in the morning and just smile and say, hey, I I was one of those people. You know, what I'm saying it's only a few bit in that category, like I said. So yeah, being able to say I was one of them is it's it's a, it's a blessing. Well, the NCAA meet was two weeks ago, and tell me, as you were you were heading to your first NCAA out, outdoor meet, what was your mindset and, and what were your expectations for the meet? Um, going into NCAA's, I was uh, a little nervous. You know, uh, I was kind of thinking about how it went indoor and how it uh, how it turned out. So I was I was a little nervous. You know, uh, but I, I knew in my mind I could do something crazy. You know, or at least try. Um, outcome, not what I wanted, of course. Um, and I kind of use it as momentum to say, I know I can do better. I know I can give it my all next time. And next time it, it's, it's going to be something crazy. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to run here at, uh, Juniors and back on the track, um, at the Nationals and see how this one goes. <laughs> Hopefully a better result. Um, and yeah, I just, I'm, I'm back better than ever, uh, healthier than ever. Um, I feel like uh, feel like I'm, I'm I'm ready for this one. I prepare myself, loud enough. Coach Carj, loud and my teammates, you know, they like, help me do this. And I believe in the training staff that I've had, like I said, as far as Coach Carj, loud and teammates and stuff. So I'm 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 very excited to see how this one's gonna turn out. Right, you uh, you finish the at NCAA's forty five eighty one to tie for ninth and missed out on making the. Uh, Missed out on making the final by one spot in just fifteen hundredths of a second. Uh, what um, yeah. what was your initial reaction and after the race, and what are your thoughts on it now? Um, you know, of course, after the race, I was uh, I was upset. You know, I uh, I wasn't wasn't happy at all. Um, but thoughts now, hey, <laughs> the past is the past, future is the future. So I know I got more meat. I made it that far. Um, with a lot of accomplished, accomplishments throughout my uh, season, 
as a freshman, you know, only, like I said, I'm only 18. Um, especially being so young, I cannot say I made a lot of that accomplishment. So I'm not really going to hang my head too much. I know I'm not done, so I'm excited to get back out there.